Okay, well, major indices are slightly higher this morning with the NASDAQ reaching a record high moments ago. Add the Dow and the S&P 500 to that list of records. Let's talk about what is moving the market with Ryan Payne of Payne Capital Management. He's the president there. Um, look, Ryan, is impeachment going to knock off this record run for stocks? I mean, no. The short answer Why? is no. Well, first off, it's never going to get past the, the uh, Senate at this point. We know that we have bipartisan Congress, and, and I think this is more theatrics than anything's really going to happen. More importantly, the economy's rocking, the stock market's rocking. More than likely, that's going to continue. How do you say the economy is rocking, though? Because obviously the jobs picture is very strong. We're in yes. a manufacturing recession. Inflation has not been picking up. People still want wages higher. Is it just the jobs element that is making it so rocking? You're a tough critic, Kristen. Uh, <laughs> wages are going up. I mean, that's good. They're up over 3%. We have 50-year unemployment. It's been the 60s or less time we had unemployment this low. Uh, you know, if you look at manufacturing, business activity is starting to pick up this month. So we had a little bit of a trough. And globally, you're starting to see manufacturing pick up, which is fantastic. And even retail sales in China last month were very good. So I suspect we're through the worst, which means we're going to get more good news going into 2020. Okay, what about FedEx earnings? Because these were terrible. 40% decline. It hurts. In the company's profit. I mean, it, it really, really hurt. Um, the company's CEO said operating results declined due to weak global economic conditions. That was the first thing they alluded to. What are they seeing that other people aren't seeing right now? Well, we've had a trade war, right? And it looks like that's coming to an end as well, right? We Maybe. Phase I mean, one. Yeah, phase one, but it doesn't sure. mean an end of the trade war, right? We still do have uh, tariffs implemented or imposed on a significant portion of, of goods that come into the, to the U.S. from China each year. Yeah, absolutely. But I think you have to look at it from the perspective of But now they're starting to ratchet back, right? We've already seen the worst of it. And even arguably FedEx has probably been through the worst of it now. So it might be a good time to pick up some FedEx shares on a decline like this. Um, you might be bolder than me to do it. But, you know, point is, I think we're, we're getting through the worst of it already. So a lot of the bad news is already out. Now we've got to start looking you know, forward because the market looks forward, right? With FedEx's stock down 100 bucks, right, since... I guess January 1st of last year and the, in the past two years, do people still look at the stock as a bellwether or some sort of indication as what is going on with the broader economy? I doubt it just because you made a great point about now internally, Amazon's gonna have like 50% of their distribution going through their own partners. That's the Amazon effect more than what's going on with the economy in general. So what's 2020 looking like to you? I mean, can the momentum that we've seen on the US indices this year, can it keep going into 2020? Oh, I'm wildly bullish. Um, as this year, as most strategists were not, and even going to next year, if you look at Barron's over the weekend, most strategists are, again, very timid about next year. They're talking about like 5% returns to the market. I doubt that. When you have a big year like we do this year, typically the momentum can, that's going to go into the next year. Furthermore, you got to remember, most people are not in this market. We had a quarter of a trillion dollars, a trillion, come out of the market this year even with the market up almost 30% if you count dividends. So I suspect you have a lot of people that need to get back into this market, and that could really push it up a lot further, especially going into the next so year. So what's your estimate in terms of percentage gain that we look at a year from now? I mean, I think at least 10% double digit for the S&P, but globally, I think the opportunity is even better. Uh, you know, those markets are really have a lot more pent up demand. Where? Emerging markets, Europe, Japan. I mean, Europe's had a tough time, right? Yeah, and it's priced you know, because it's had a tough time. So now you have cheaper valuations in Europe. But if you look at earnings growth rates overseas, they're just as good in Europe now. And furthermore, emerging markets, they're even better. And you're getting multiples that are way cheaper. So as an investor, you have to have the global economy in there. Can Apple be stopped? The stock at a record high. These tariffs are not going into effect on its iPhone. It seems like this is a wonderful position for Apple. Well, the stock's up over 70% this year. So there are parts of the market that have really, really done really, really well. And I don't think... Let me take a step back. So I think it's momentum could keep going, but it's probably not the best value up 70% right now. As a buyer of equities, you don't want to buy the stuff that's way up. You want to buy the stuff that's on sale, like energy stocks right now, financial. So that's where you want to start to spread your money into. Is there any concern to you about the massive influence that just a handful of companies have on the S&P 500, especially as more and more millennial investors are turning to index funds or funds that do match the movement of the S&P? Yeah, absolutely. I call the S&P a tech fund and drag. It's almost 30% tech at this point, if you look at and, the main drivers. And just, yeah. a, just a handful of companies, right? It's, it's Facebook, it's Google, it's Amazon, and it's Apple and Microsoft. Yes, and I think it's the biggest mistake you can make here, because as money comes back into the market, and I think it will, you're going to see money pile into the S&P 500, which is still, it's not trading cheap anymore. You're 19 times forward earnings, and then you're getting concentrated positions, all those stocks you just mentioned. Another reason why you want to be more discerning, you want to have global exposure in your portfolio, 
you know, even breaking out your money for growth stocks and value stocks, because then if you concentrate in more like, you know, the big financial names, like I was just talking about, like say, JP Morgan, Citigroup, uh, energy names, like Exxon, like you want to own that stuff as well. When I, when I make that argument with friends, they say, hey, Apple's a global company. Hey, Google is a global company. How would you respond? Well, first off, you want to look at you know, multiples. They've already had a great run. We already know that. Um, and furthermore, if you look at it from the perspective of they still generate a lot of sales in the U.S., right? In the S&P specifically, it's 70% of their revenue is in U.S. dollars. So that's not that diversified globally if you think about it. So not only having pure international exposure, you're missing out on the fact that right now the dollar is strong versus other currencies, and you can exploit that by owning you know, essentially other markets around the world. So that doesn't, that doesn't do it for you. What makes Exxon attractive as crude oil prices have remained low and as we know many companies are trying to iterate and, and be part of the business of the future, right? Electric vehicles, sure. autonomous driving, you name it. Sure, but statistically that has still has a long way to go. And if you look at energy demand globally for fossil fuels, it's going to keep going up. Uh, energy prices are actually up 30% year over year going back to last December. So they're starting to rise. And meanwhile, you're getting fat dividends. You're getting like a 5 6% dividend on Exxon right now. You know, whereas it's a yield-starved world when you start looking at what you're getting on your money market fund. 2% just doesn't cut it, Kristen. So, you know, if you start looking at that, you look at the dividends you're actually receiving and the fact that oil prices could rise here. It's a good combination. Okay, so House Speaker Nancy Pelosi touting this USMCA deal, right? The House yes. set to vote on it tomorrow. Is that a market-moving vote? I think, well, first off, I think it's going to go through. That's what the market thinks. And I think that's going to have a very positive impact on GDP. And most strategists, which never get it right, are still thinking GDP is not going to be great next year. That's going to be a surprise in the positive. How are you, how are you pricing in a Democratic win in 2020 for president? I, I don't lose any sleep over it. I don't even think about it. Because number one, first off, you, know, you, you have to figure out who the Democratic nominee is going to be. Then if they even get elected, which odds are not great, Again, you have a divided House and Senate, so what's really going to get done? So I think the biggest mistake you can do is bringing politics actually into your investing strategy. So do you think the market is pricing in a, a, a Trump re-election? I think the market doesn't really care. I think what the market cares about is earnings, and I think earnings are going to be very good next year, and the economy is going to be very good next year. And I think the biggest mistake you can make next year is let the politics get away from a good investment strategy. Warren Buffett said it first. I never delay a business decision because what's going on Capitol Hill? Okay, Ryan Payne breaking it down for us. Uh, Payne Capital Management, he's the president <laughs> there. Thanks for joining us.